London and North Eastern Railway, the LNER, was one of the big four railway companies formed in 1923 when the 123 smaller railways in Britain were grouped together. Operating on the eastern side of the country, the LNER was the second largest of the big four in terms of route miles and became famous for its prestigious high speed trains. Throughout its 25 years, it was locked in a fierce battle with the LMS, the London, Midland and Scottish Railway, on the west coast, on the routes between London and Scotland. And this led to rapid advances in locomotive and train design. When it was formed, the LNER inherited many different types of locomotives from the different smaller railway companies. This is the last surviving example of the C2 class of locomotive. The first 442 or Atlantic type in Great Britain. 442 is a layout of the wheels driving the locomotive. York Station was designed to accommodate trains on the York and Midland Railway and the Great Northern Railway. Upon completion in 1877 it had 13 platforms and was the largest in the world. Even though 6 million people use the station annually, the numbers of people on the platforms today is vastly increased as it is nearly time for the arrival of a very special visitor. And here she is, LNER 4472 Flying Scotsman. Built in Doncaster in 1923, Flying Scotsman was the first locomotive to be built by the newly formed London and North Eastern Railway, as the grouping of the railways happened just before the loco was finished. The design was by the LNER's chief engineer, H. N. Gresley.
fine Scotsman is hauling the Scarborough Spa Express special to the seaside town. Four four seven two was one of five Gresley Pacifics selected to haul the prestigious non-stop Flying Scotsman train service from London to Edinburgh, after which this locomotive was named, hauling the inaugural train on the 1st of May 1928. The locomotive has had a more colourful history since its withdrawal from operating service. First being saved by Alan Pegler, then visiting both the United States and Australia, and also being sold to new owners several times. Now the loco is in the hands of the National Railway Museum. And is seen here at the Doncaster Steam and Speed event in 2001. Southland on the beautiful North Yorkshire Moors Railway is the setting for the next locomotive of the LNER. Steaming towards the camera is the last remaining member of the once numerous Class T2 from the North Eastern Railway, here on a demonstration freight service.
Some 120 locomotives were built in the Class T2 between 1913 and 1921 at Darlington Works. Arriving into Pickering Station, double heading with Midland Railways 53809 in front, is sole survivor of the class, wearing its British Railways number as 63395. The shed code of 51A tells us that the loco is stationed at Darlington Shed. The T2s were designed by Vincent Raven, the North Eastern Railway's chief mechanical engineer, from 1910 to 1922. After passing into LNER ownership, the locos were reclassified as Q6s and renumbered. Remarkably, along with the class J27s, the Q6s were one of the very few pre-grouping steam locomotives to survive right until the end of steam on British railways. All the class passed into British Railways ownership in 1948 and they were renumbered in the series 63340 to 64359. 63372 was the first of the class to be withdrawn following an accident in 1960. General withdrawals were between 1963 and 1967. The Q6s, or T2s, were built with an 080 wheel design and their purpose was heavy freight. With the Midland Railway loco now at the front, 63395 brings up the rear in a formation called top and tailing.
the train is seen several minutes later down the line in the Yorkshire Moors. At another Steam Gala weekend, 63395 is hauling the demonstration freight train, passing Gothling Station once again. But this time, we have a trackside view of the action. Upon withdrawal from British Railways, 63395 was the subject of a preservation appeal by the Newcastle-based Northeastern Locomotive Preservation Group. The appeal was successful and the loco was purchased by the NELPG on the 1st of April 1968. Six double three nine five was operated on the newly reopened North Yorkshire Moors Railway from the early 1970s right until 1982, when she was withdrawn pending a major overhaul. Unfortunately. Due to other commitments in the group, the loco had to wait until the year 2000, some 18 years later, before that overhaul was started. It was completed in 2007. The loco is seen here, departing from the northern end of the North Yorkshire Moors Railway, Gromont.
61994, named the Great Marquis, is the sole survivor of the once six-strong K4 class of locomotives, designed by the famous Nigel Gresley, for the steep grades of the West Highland Line between Fort William and Malone. Here she is employed on the much less difficult National Rail side of Gromont Station, on a service from Whitby. And later, arriving at Gromont, is 61264, a B1 class of locomotive, designed by Sir Nigel Gresley's successor, Edward Thompson. The B1s were a plentiful and useful class, with a total of 410 being built between 1942 and 1952, meaning that 136 of the B1s were actually built under the reign of British Railway. Seen here at Gromont's engine shed on the North Yorkshire Moors Railway is the only preserved member of the K1 class of locomotive. Sixty-two double O five entered service in 1949 and was allocated to York North Shed, part of which is actually now the home of the National Railway Museum. Sixty-two five is a well-travelled locomotive, and because she is mainline certificated, she spends many days on the West Highland Line between Fort William and Malaig, hauling the popular Jacobite steam tours during the summer and autumn months. Here she is on the famous Keithley and Worth Valley Railway at the southern terminus, Oxenhope.
The successful K1 class came about when the LNER's 3445, the K4 class locomotive, was rebuilt in 1945 as a two-cylinder prototype of the K1 class, designated K1 Stroke 1. When the production versions were designed, several modifications were made. The running plates were redesigned and there were changes to the leading pony truck, the cylinder linings and the boiler. The production locos were also longer and received bigger tenders holding 4,200 gallons of water as opposed to the 3,500 gallons of the K4s. An order for 70 of the new mixed traffic 260s were placed with the North British Locomotive Company of Glasgow. They were the last steam locomotives built to an LNER design, although all were delivered under British Railways auspices. numbered 62001-70, to 70. they entered service between May 1949 and March 1950. They worked extensively over ex LNER territory, but they were chiefly associated with North East England and following in the footsteps of their predecessors, the K4s, the West Highland Line. 62005 spent much of its early time in preservation, numbered 2005, and in LNER Apple Green livery. This livery is not historically accurate as the engine was built in 1949 after nationalisation and never had this livery when in service. The repaint to BR Line Black is therefore most welcome. As is the case with many steam locomotives, this is the sole survivor of the 15-strong A2 class designed by Arthur Peppercorn, 60532 Blue Peter, and technically it could be described as a British Railways locomotive, as it outshot after British Railways were formed in 1948. Indeed, it was painted in LNER apple green, but numbered 6532 with British Railways on its tender side.
a class of locomotive definitely built in the LNERs era, were the ones they became famous for. We are back at York Station, awaiting the arrival of 6009, an A4 class Pacific locomotive named Union of South Africa. The loco is hauling the last leg of the day's Scarborough Spa Express Special into York. The A4s were a class of streamlined 462 steam locomotives designed by Sir Nigel Gresley in 1935. One of the class, 4468 Mallard, holds the record as the fastest steam locomotive in the world. Originally, just four of the A4s were built to be integrated into a new streamlined train called the Silver Jubilee that was to run between London's King's Cross and Newcastle. The new service was named in celebration of King George V's 25th year of reign. The story goes that in 1933, Gresley was impressed with the design of the streamlined flying Hamburger diesel trains that had recently been introduced in Germany. After trials with one of the A3 locomotives, Gresley set about building a streamlined development of the A3. The four locomotives all had the word silver as part of their names, to match the name of the train. The first being 2509 Silver Link, the others being 2510 Quicksilver, 2511 Silver King and 2512 Silver Fox. Following the commercial success of the Silver Jubilee train, other streamlined services were introduced. The coronation between London and Edinburgh and the West Riding Limited between Bradford, Leeds and London. For these new services, more A4s were built. This locomotive was built in 1937 at Doncaster and originally carried the number Double four, double eight. She had originally been allocated the name Osprey, but was renamed after the then newly formed Union of South Africa. Today the locomotive is owned by John Cameron and sees regular rail tour use, thanks to her being certified for main line use.
Here she is hauling the support coach out of the platform and back to her temporary home with the nearby sidings, ready for the next trip out tomorrow. A snow-capped, windy day in February and the reason for standing in the middle of the North Yorkshire Moors is to catch a wonderful glimpse of another preserved A4 locomotive. Far in the distance, she pulls into Leversham Station and it's not long to wait to see her thundering around the various curves of the North Yorkshire Moors Railway. Running tender first and making a remarkable sight is double four six four bitten. Built for the LNER in 1937 at Doncaster Works with the works number 1866, she was originally numbered 4464. She was renumbered 19 on August the 16th, 1946, under the LNER's renumbering scheme. And after nationalisation in 1949, BR added 60,000 to its number, so it became 60019 on October the 10th, 1948.
the class was destined for greatness, as during a press run to publicise his service, Silver Link twice achieved a speed of 111.5 miles per hour, breaking the British speed record. The A4s once totaled a class of 35, and an amazing six survive into preservation, including one in the United States and another in Canada. The modern day LNER main line is the East Coast main line, still running from London King's Cross to Edinburgh and Glasgow. Services today are hauled by several Class 43 diesel high-speed trains. And these, the Class 91 electrics, which were, until recently, the fastest electric trains in the UK. But nothing of the modern era is really like the steam locomotives of the LNER. <laughs> 